Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you for joining me on the Word Podcast. This is episode number 550. Can you imagine? Uh, we try to do one of these a day, and I think we've been able to do that for 550 episodes here. And so uh, let me just encourage you to share with your friends, your family, even your enemies <laughs> about these times together. You know, the podcast is becoming quite popular as a means of communication <clears throat> worldwide. Uh, but people are still learning exactly what it is and how it is and really about the convenience and how you can just sort of listen to uh, news things or or a Bible study, things like this, or educational things, whatever it may be. There's just uh, hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there. So uh, help folks learn how to uh, access things and show them how you access it. And that we can uh, expand our time together because it's good uh, to gather together as the people of the Lord around the Word of God. And we read the Gospel of John of late, and we're in the 19th chapter, and we see uh, that Jesus has uh, been handed over to the powers that be. He's with Pilate right now, and we saw in the last episode in John chapter 19, verse 14, that it was the day of preparation of the Passover. This would have been the 14th day of the sun. It was about six, the sixth hour, which would be six o'clock in the morning. The sun was rising. And so Pilate said to the Jews, behold your king. He was saying that to the Jewish leadership and the people before he had brought Jesus out and said, behold the man. And he was hoping to let him go. And it, then he became terrified when the Jewish leadership said, no, no, we need to kill him because he claims to be the son of God. So he goes back and he talks with Jesus. After talking with Jesus, Jesus wouldn't answer anything until he said, you have no authority over me except for the authority that was given to you from heaven. And actually the one who handed me over to you has a greater sin than you do. So anyway, he brings him back out, and that's when he says, Behold your king. Well, then the people are crying out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. This is verse 15. And Pilate says, Shall I crucify your king? And I'm saying that in sort of a snarky way because I think that's the way he said it. But then the chief priest declared, We have no king but Caesar. See, the Jews had been a thorn in the flesh of the Romans uh, for all their existence, okay? And now for the Jewish people to say, we have no king but Caesar. You know, when Pilate says, shall I crucify your king? He knew that the Jewish people did not really recognize Caesar as king, but they just acquiesced to it, and they just gave feign following to it. He knew that their faith was in another king, Yahweh, but now their leadership, the chief priests answer, we have no king but Caesar. What a declaration. So verse 16. So he, Pilate, delivered him, Jesus, over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. You'll also see in the King James New American Standard, it says, which in Hebrew is Golgotha. The uh, ESV and the Lexham say, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. The place was called Golgotha, okay? And it literally means skull. Uh, John tells us that he was carrying his own cross and bearing his own cross, which he did. The other Gospels tell us that Simon of Serene was then pressed in to help him, pressed into service to help him. Uh, you would do well to read all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to get the total story of what the Lord has revealed to us of what happened that day. Now, John 19, verse 18. There they crucified him. And with him, two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. That's sort of interesting. Right? Jesus uh, was labeled, okay, that he had a inscription, that he had a sign on the cross as to who he was. Verse 20 says this. Many of the Jews read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. It was right, out the, right outside the city. And it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. <coughs> well, you know, again, I think this gives us insight into the relationship between Pilate and the Jews and the Jewish leadership between Rome and the nation of Israel. And so Pilate, uh, went to the trouble, at least, to dictate and order it to be done, that an inscription, a sign be put up, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of Jews, 
And then in all three languages, Aramaic, Latin, and Greek, to where everybody would know, to where everybody would see. Now, I wonder what this was take, talking about. Remember, the Jewish leadership was threatening Pilate. They wanted Jesus killed. And they wound up threatening him, saying, we have no king but Caesar. This guy says he's a king. And if you let him go, then you're letting somebody who says he's a king go. And anybody who says he's a king is in opposition to Caesar. Okay, they oppose Caesar. So I think there's a couple of things, at least a couple of things going on right here. I think that Pilate is throwing this in the face of the Jewish leadership. But I think he is even more than that. He's covering himself. Because he's going to be able and go back and find witness after witness after witness that says, oh, yeah, we saw where Pilate killed Jesus of Nazareth, the one that said he was the king of the Jews. So if anybody from Rome ever questioned how Pilate handled this, he couldn't take a selfie of himself in front of the cross, right? He couldn't document it that way. He put the sign up where people would know beyond any shadow of a doubt that this is Jesus of Nazareth. This is the one that the Jews want to kill. This is the one they said said was the king of the Jews. And I dealt with that. And so there would be no question from Rome. So everybody would know better. Verse 21. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. In other words, they wanted him to come back, put the sign up, says Jesus of Nazareth, who claimed to be king of the Jews. <coughs> and Pilate had had enough of this by now. Can you imagine? John 19, verse 22. Pilate answered, what I've written, I've written. That was it. In other words, I have put up enough of y'all. I'm not going to have anything else to do with this right here. I told you that I thought he's innocent. I still think he's innocent. I don't think there's any guilt with him. But you've entrapped me within this thing. And so I'm covering myself. I'm putting that sign up there to where Rome will know that I dealt with this king of the Jews. Now, he had no idea to what degree uh, Jesus truly was the king of the Jews. The Jews had no idea what was about to happen. At this very moment, Satan is filled with glee and all his minions because all the work of the uh, ages before, shall we say, of dealing with the line of the one to come was being dealt with right now. Satan really thought that he was putting Jesus to death, and he was. Satan really thought that he was dealing with that line of Messiah that goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. He really thought that he was. And we'll see this later on in other portions of Scripture. I think in Hebrews talks about this, some, some other places, that if Satan had known what was about to be precipitated, he never would have killed Jesus. That was the Jesus, reason that Jesus was so enigmatic in the way that he shared things, in the way that he said things. That's the reason that the Old Testament is like that. There's things in the Old Testament that you don't see and you don't understand until you see and understand the resurrection. That was the whole point. <clears throat> the resurrection. The resurrection is the power of God. Okay, The resurrection is the power of the, sal of the gospel, the good news of salvation. And Satan did not know that. The Jewish leadership refused to see it. Pilate did not know it. So Pilate just says, I've written what I've written. It's going to be over with. But as the, um, the sort of the newer song, David Phelps does that song <laughs> that has the title, this was just the end of the beginning. Isn't that a great thought? The end of the beginning. Well, anyway, I'll see you again next episode. I'm Dale. See you later. Goodbye.